I begin my journey right from here to the city of Sialkot, the birthplace of Akbar. Perhaps in this travel, I would be able to show some special features of that righteous man. Today, Sialkot is a city in Punjab, Pakistan. The city, when Akbar was born, was part of India. Sialkot is situated in northeast Punjab province. Due to geographical conditions and rich water sources, from long ago, the main activity of the inhabitants has been agriculture. To see the past of the region in today's less touched villages, I went to the city through by roads. But my Pakistani companions felt deeply troubled due to lack of road signs. Trying not to get lost, they had to keep asking native inhabitants about the address. Sialkot is a beautiful region in Kashmir. God has granted all his blessings to this city. There is plenty of water and grains in this region. In summer, it is not hot here. In fact, it is very cold, as the region is close to the Kashmir mountains. From here to the Indian Kashmir, there is a distance of only 19 kilometers, therefore the weather in this city is very nice. When it gets very cold, people consume large amounts of dried fruits and wear warm clothes. Here is the very room wherein Iqbal was born on the 9th of November 1877 at 5.14 a.m. The house here was built by his grandfather, Sheikh Muhammad Rafiq. He was the first to occupy the house. On the 6th of February, 1861, he bought three small rooms and a house near here until Iqbal was born. Later, Iqbal's elder brother came here. The house has undergone no change since then. Iqbal's ancestors were high-ranking Brahmins of Kashmir. They converted to Islam 500 years before Iqbal was born. The family was called Separu, meaning educated. His father was a cloth dealer. Nur Muhammad's shop was frequented by great thinkers of Islamic sects. His mother, Imam Bibi, was also a religious woman. Iqbal had one brother and four sisters, all of them his senior. Rooms were built before anything else in 1861. Iqbal's family prepared the first room for the wives. There, in that room, you see a cradle and a chair.
जब आप इसकी सीढ़ियाँ चढ़कर ऊपर जाएंगे तो एक बड़ा हाल कमरा आपको नजर आएगा। Iqbal's mother used to sit beside the window and order what she needed. There is another room. Next to it, you see Iqbal's father's room. Over there, you see a hookah and three of Iqbal's photographs. What I said was about Iqbal's father's room. He chanted the Quran every morning. Passing here, people would stop to listen to him reading the Quran and leave only when he was finished. Encouraged by his father, Muhammad Akbal learned the Quran from his very childhood. In Hisamuddin Mosque of Kashmiris, basic lessons were learned at home. As Ekbal says, this was the best period of his lifetime, because under his father's support, his thinking foundations became established. Sialkot's graveyard tells years later, when his father died, the story of Ekbal's attachment. To Allama ke wale. After his father's death, Iqbal did not talk to anyone for three days. His elder brother was Sheikh Atta Muhammad, who built this house. Iqbal's brother-in-law told Sheikh Atta Muhammad, "Your brother has stopped talking for three days." Sheikh Muhammad hugged Iqbal and took him to mother's room, telling him, "We got lonely when our mother died." Then he took Iqbal to father's room and told, "Today we lost our father to become orphans." Iqbal really loved his childhood's learning and his parents so much that upon their death. He bought a 10-meter tomb within the city's graveyard to build a family dome. This is the only property registered under Akbal's name. Later in his life, contrary to his outstanding position, he never tried to amass wealth or buy any property. Since childhood, Akbal's thought was based on a firm foundation, on reflection. And it is this factor which brings here from all over the world Iqbal's adherents to commemorate him and to talk about his thoughts. Iqbal was born on a blessed day, like today in Sialkot. He became familiar with the Quran from his childhood. He learned reciting the Quran in the city's mosque. A close friend of Iqbal's father was Mr. Mulana Kulam Hassan. He recited the Quran pleasantly. Iqbal went to this man's school to learn the Quran. It is said that Iqbal owes his progressive way of thinking to his own father, who had encouraged many Muslim thinkers. In turn, to delve deeply in Quran's teaching. Mulana Mir Hassan, a sincere, close friend of Iqbal's father, saw Iqbal one day. Mir Hassan asked Iqbal's father to send Iqbal to his home to be properly educated and trained. So Iqbal went to Mir Hassan's home and he taught the Quran to Iqbal. Iqbal's father told his son, "When you are chanting the Quran, think as if the Quran is being descended to you, as if Allah is talking to you." For that very reason, Iqbal thought quite deeply about the Quran and its content. As it is apparent, the Quran governed over Iqbal's ideas about social 
and political issues. So many times I have asked myself, what is existence? From where does it take root? What a secret it is that has attracted thinkers' attention. I could not find answers to those questions. Then, many years later, when my thoughts expanded, I traveled back to my childhood to find answers to my questions. There it was my father who decided on the shape a thing should take. Years later, when unknown things became clear to me, I came to understand Mir Hassan's teachings. He talked to me about the Book of Life, but he did not mention the book's title. A condition set before me by him was this, to learn new sciences Europeans learn. It is only then that you come to know what the value of the Book of Life is. He was quite right. Years later, with all my heart, I came to fully know the Book of Life. The Book of Life the Holy Qur'an, whose wisdom is eternal and solid. It is an illustration for life secrets. Its power makes the unfaithful faithful. To mankind it is the only message. The bearer of it will enjoy the mercy of both worlds. Bandits turn into leaders just through its memorization. They become pious just with the help of this very book. He whose heart's pulsation is a result of the book's warmth, his restless way finds comfort just as does a pearl. Should you want to live a Muslim life, only through the Qur'an is this possible. May the world's darkness disappear through the life of mine. May every place light up with a sparkling light of mine. Children are coming from school, one by one. They come to see Iqbal's pictures in a gallery where they can see pictures absent in their textbooks. This is a famous prayer of Allah Iqbal who used to sing it in a pleasant voice. The last part of the prayer is part of the translation of one of the Holy Quran's opening chapters which goes thus. You alone do we worship, and you eight alone do we see. Every travel has an end except the travel to the depth of thought. From this very point, I started my travel and went a long time path, and the travel is still going on among people's ignorance. I travel a very long way just to revive religious knowledge from wisdom's insufficiency through Descartes' philosophy to describe intuition's knowledge aided by Bergson, I spent my whole life familiarizing Muslims with real facts and telling them illuminating things in a hope that someday they may know very well the truth underlying the book.